So um, let's get started. Madlina is unfortunately uh, today not with us because she is in. She's celebrating um, Easter. Romanian uh, Easter, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I'm going to lead this meeting again. Hope everyone's uh, having a good time. Um, let's get started. Um, are you recording, Michael? Yep. OK, cool. So I see we have no previous action items, which means that we got everything done uh, last week. Um, so if there aren't any previous action items, um, I think that we can jump right into development. Ricky, I see you're here. You want to take this one? I'll let, I'll let Kadir. Or Kadir. <laughs> OK, Kadir. Um, so what we are doing this week, I already uh, announced that last week, but uh, what's happening right now is uh, on our roadmap item, the 75% of the time, we are spending on improving the ask a question flow and this is currently spearheaded by eBuy. Uh, so if you're interested in uh, all of the things, there is a, a huge amount of things that we're doing on the ask a question flow. If you're interested in all the little details, you can follow the link uh, to the sprint and all the stuff that is interested or the ask a question flow is marked with AAQ so you can see in detail what, what we are doing there. It's, it's a huge number of things and I'm pretty sure it's going to be uh, a huge win for our users when we are done with all of that. So that's what we are focusing on uh, now in the ninth sprint. But we also have a number of smaller items that we're doing in our 25% time. Uh, and right now, one of those things is uh, showing a warning. Like we want to sh show a warning to users of older Firefox browsers because they're outdated and insecure. So we want to make sure that they are always on the latest version. We want to push them from our side too. And uh, we also started implementing parts of the a uh, new topic, subtopic, navigation. Um, so we are not showing, uh, for, for desktop and um, mobile articles, we are not showing the um, focus and refine panel at this, uh, at, at, this mo at this point. We are showing the uh, subtopics that we have. Um, so we have streamlined the navigation, removed a number of articles uh, from um, appearing in, in duplicate positions. Um, and that's, that's for users, but for community, we also have a number of goodies in there. And one of the things that we didn't get to in the last sprint that we are doing uh, in this sprint, and it's hopefully going to be great, is the um, forum views, so showing people how often a threat has been actually seen, uh, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, we didn't quite get that in the last time, but it's, uh, it's on the plate for this sprint. So that's the big one. Uh, there, are, there are more smaller items that you can read uh, that are listed in the uh, community section, um, like individual rights for localizers and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, there is the full list. And that's what we're doing in um, development, the sprint. Uh, Rosanna, are you muted? Sorry, sorry. I was just saying that uh, it looks like you have a lot of cool things going on. Absolutely. Um, You're really excited about all of that stuff. Okay, yeah. So just, David, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was muted. I didn't realize. And Tad was just say, telling us, uh, Tom, that he's also having issues with video. So probably he can join us a little bit later. Great. Um, I'm here. Yeah, Tad. Yeah, okay. Live chat. I'm here. Um, just on Skype. Like, sorry? I'm here, but I'm on Skype. Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. That. So we're gonna go now to if does anyone have any questions regarding the um, the development um, updates from Kadir, or should we jump right next to the UX updates? Well, if there's nothing else, that that UX update is a thing I um, added, but it Kadir already covered it about the topic mm -hmm. subtopic thing. Just a little more detail. Same, but he already talked about it. Yeah, and just reiterating, Brahm is currently working on the designs for the final uh, topic and subtopic navigation pages. So we, we hope that we can share those uh, drafts this week in the uh, community um, platform meeting on Thursday. Um, yeah, that, that's what he's doing for UX right now. Okay. That sounds uh, good. So, so I think we have that. Uh, Tom, I'm glad you're, that you're online. Um, so we can jump right next to the uh, roundtable uh, topics. Um, so you wanted to talk about the live, ch uh, live chat, right, uh, Tom? Um, 
Yeah, I did. I'm just setting up my presentation now. So I've done a quick presentation, but I'm going to have to share you a link to it. Um, Okay, I'll just drop the link into IRC if you just want to take a look at that. And I'm just going to control that from here. Okay, so so there's been a quite quite a lot of contributors who have mentioned that they like live chat back. Um, I'm personally one of them. We tried bringing it back through IRC, but Rosanna suggested that we come through to you on the meeting. Um, we've brought, brought some questions forward that we've been asked quite a lot. Um, there's a little link at the top with all of the questions, but we thought these are the main ones. Please ask us to in live chat again so that we can make the support for them be your live chat. But we don't think that's possible because it's a completely different experience. Um, if you go onto a live chat, you're actually talking to a human. When you're on a forum, you feel like you're talking to somebody who's just got a canvas font and they're dropping it into a form for you and they're just giving you a piece of information that you could have found with a quick Google search. But if you're actually talking to someone real time, it feels like an actual human that you're talking to. And people have asked us, is live chat just Army of Awesome in a new format? But it's not. Army of Awesome requires Twitter accounts, and, and users get bored of, users post random things on Twitter, sorry. And we don't want that to create a different environment about Mozilla, because you could randomly tweet someone giving them help, but then have, it, have random tweets on your account which comes across as quite unprofessional at times. And I've noticed that when I've looked through the Army of Awesome Twitter comments. And people have said that we need lots of resources, but realistically we don't. Most, in, most live chats are based on PHP and other web formats. That could be done with simply one of the existing servers, or we could put it into one of the new cloud instances that we're setting up with AWS at Community IT, which I'll move on to in a minute. Okay, sorry, I didn't uh, get that last part um, acoustically. Could you repeat that? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You can go back. So the last question was, what resources do we need? Um, people seem to think that we need a lot of resources, but we don't. There's Basically, we just need something that can host PHP or some other web format. That could be one of the existing servers, or we could go for something like the AWS. Um, AWS is something that the community IT team, which is my primary team, are looking into at the moment. We've just got a quick comparison here of live chat and all the other different methods of support. At the moment, Army and Awesome and the forums are our primary support methods. On those two, contributors aren't able to take conversations without another contributor having the ability to jump in and, and change it, which could leave the user confused top at times. Whereas with live chat, the only time someone could jump in is if the operator has to go or the operator is doing something wrong, which the room monitor needs to interrupt with. Live chat guarantees that as soon as the person asks a question, they're going to get a prompt response, which I know I'm impatient myself. So I like, when I have an issue, I like to have click a button and ask somebody that question. When people post on the forums, they usually left, they usually leave it after because they find it a bit hassle to go back every day Check, the, check their um, topic, check their emails. It, it becomes something that only a power user really wants to do, someone who has to go and check their emails every day anyway. 
um, an army of awesome. The people have to be connected to Twitter, and just pointed out a few issues with Twitter. Twitter is a bit plain seen unprofessional, and a lot of people don't use it. It, and it doesn't really open contribution pathway for people that don't use Twitter. Um, and I've already mentioned that last one. Whereas if we get live chat, all of the issues can be solved that I've mentioned there. Because live chat is, as I said in the previous slide, completely different to both of these. Um, okay, so here's some of the results. Ideas that come up with. We think that we could actually do this on a new server for absolutely nothing. Amazon Cloud Mice, for instance, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of Amazon Cloud. They run a Mice, for instance, which you can get for free. Um, that could be managed by either somebody setting up an account for support or Community IT has just got an account and we could run it through there for you. Um, and as for the software, there's lots of different already existing open source pieces of software that we could just modify it to suit our needs. For example, Crafty Syntax, it's very, very powerful. It's just ugly. So if we were to modify the design of that, that would be a perfect solution for us. Administration. So Apart from the issues with having these resources, these resources have got to be managed and so the live chat because we can't just have random users coming in answering questions for people but not having to what they're on about or not being moderated. Similar to moderation on the forums. So it's why we've got the three different um, roles of the live chat. We've completely got rid of trainees because we thought that trainee was quite, um, it, it sort of divided the new contributors from the existing long term contributors, which wasn't the greatest for community building, really. People don't want to be named as a new person, realistically. An operator can take chats, they can transfer chats to other people, and they can basically do everything you'd expect a phone operator to do. The moderator is sort of like the supervisor. If you've got an issue with the operator, you can talk to a moderator. Or the moderator can see what the operator is talking about. The operator can open and close chat. Only the operator can open and close chat because we find that um, if the operator was to break a rule while the moderator is not there, then there wouldn't be much point in having these different roles. And the council are sort of the administrators. They can they decide who becomes a moderator, who can perform the commands, except modifying the core system that things like the how like how much RAM it can use, how much of everything it can use, everything that's based upon the server settings. And I keep mentioning the community IT team here because I think that this would be a great project for us to work on. Um, access to the core system settings. They can change how much RAM different parts of it can use. They can um, do the same as operators because obviously anybody can do the same as operators if they signed up. And they also have access to the server that it's hosted on because that, that's their role to manage the server. The privacy. When we had the last live chat, people had the opportunity to put any detail that they wanted in. But looking back, that's a bad idea. Our privacy policy says that we won't disclose this information. But how can we support, be sure of that, if the contributors haven't signed an NDA? So we said that the email isn't required, but if it's entered, it will only be stored and it won't be shown to the volunteer. The only people who can access the email address is, is the people who manage the server databases and they don't really, really be able to see them if they work inside the database fixing something. Um, okay, yeah, that's all I've got for that. Has anybody got any questions about it?
Actually, I have a, this is not a question, just a technical thing for the presentation for later. Is there a version of this that I can download where I can uh, see all the slides uh, so I can add it to the video? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I can upload that for you at some point. Okay. What's your email? If you got your email into chat or private message me, I'll okay. email that to you. Okay. So, Ted, I have one question, actually. Or, um, let's say, one thing that we weren't able to solve, and I want to ask you how you would actually go about this, and that is the issue of scale. Um, you might know that we have about 800,000 users coming to our site every day. So if you want to reach even 1% of them consistently, you have to reach out to 8,000 people on chat every day. How do you, how would you solve that scaling issue? The chat isn't going to be open 24-7. It's only going to be open while there's a moderator around. It won't be like last time where you get time because that was, that was what made NRG no, the directs did end up taking loads and loads of chats because people couldn't make those times. So the idea is that when someone's wait available, we'll open. When it gets too busy, we can close. All right, but that means that you're reaching even less than 1% per day. Um, so there is a, what, what I'm meaning is that we, we had the issue that we couldn't scale this. Essentially, it takes resources from us from everyone, from contributors, but also from us, but we are reaching less than 1% of our user base with this. Even, even if we reached 8,000 people a day, we would reach less than 1% of our user base. And how does that compare to how many questions are asked in the forum? So that's, that's the great thing about the forum, and that's uh, what I just mentioned with the view counts. So certain threads on the forum get viewed like 3,000 times. Just one question. You answer one question to one person, it, it gets seen by thousands of others. Um, and, and each question, you can actually look this up, uh, and we will have this in the forum uh, hopefully next week. Each question gets hundreds of views. Uh, so you're not helping one specific person, but you're helping everyone who actually comes across this uh, by Google or by using our own search. So that's, that's actually at the core of everything that we are doing. Um, it, it, it has to be more than one-on-one, -on -one. it has to actually scale, and that means that we have to leverage our contributions um, and the stuff that we're doing. So whatever we do, it has to scale to more than one person. If, if not, it, it's just because the scale that we have here is huge. We are not helping like a thousand people per day or two thousand people per day. You're trying to help 800,000 people per day. That was, the, that was the biggest issue that we had with live chat. So I think whatever solution we come up with has to somehow address that. Um, one of the things that I incorporated into the mock-up design, which I now lost due to a hard drive failure, was that when you put your question into the box, you know where you initiate the chat, you get a box to put your first question in. That would automatically search the knowledge base using keywords and it would give the person some suggestions while they're waiting and it would bring it up in the live chat box so it they still don't have to wait for more windows they don't have to click buttons it just gives them possible answers in the live chat box while they're yeah. waiting for an operator which i think could probably solve some more issues before our queue gets busy yeah, so those are actually the things uh, that we should think should be thinking about. And we actually have thought about this thing that you're uh, talking about right now. The issue is that at that point, first, you have to uh, think about like how useful is a huge uh, chat discussion to someone else who has to follow the back and forth between uh, the person who asked the question and the person who's trying to answer it, like reading hundreds of lines. Is that really the user experience that we want to give people? And second is, isn't, the, isn't in that case the forum even better? Because you have the question, the answer, and it's, it's what we are actually trying to show to people because that, that's how we scale. There, I think that there, yeah. is a, there, is a, there is some truth on, on, on just having a different channel tailored to different people, even if it's just 100 users a day or like even 50 users a day. 
And, and what Tad is saying is, I mean, by the way, Tad, great presentation. I think it's just really thoughtful. Uh, I think that here the, the challenge is to have a mix of, of channels. So what he pictured is really good, like ask a question, or oh, uh, Army of Awesome, having the forum, having the KB, and maybe having a, a separate channel for people who kind of deal with these type of channels. Because an article for, could be overwhelming. A forum could be something that they don't understand and they cannot wrap their mind around. Chat, elderly people are, are, are regularly chatting with their, with their beloved ones over chat lately. So I think it's, it's a little bit easier. And even if it's not for that group, it could be for a different group of people. The main question is, is not if if it's going to help uh, a thousands of people or um, hundreds of thousands of people every day. I think that the main question here is, can we afford to have a, an effective chat support, even if it helps 50 people, even if it helps only 100 people? I think that that's a question that we need to, to investigate with that. I think that he gave us really good hints. And, and it's going to be a matter of, of trying to understand if we can make sure that we can have a, a solid, solid chat support that is consistent uh, with uh, the rest of our channels. More um, than if it's going to be like a scalable and if it's going to help thousands of millions of users every week. Yeah, um, Ted, I just wanted to chime in here. I, w I wanted to say that um, really thank you very much for the presentation. I think that uh, this is very, very thoughtful. It's a very good presentation. Um, we've been talking a lot about live chat, but I think that you're the first uh, contributor that actually goes the extra mile to, you know, put all the thoughts together, all the pros, the cons to analyze this. So, you know, thanks a lot for, for this presentation. Um, like, I, I, I understand both Kadir and Ibai. Uh, we've been thinking a lot about scalability and, and with live chat, is, you know, it's very hard. Um, so this is something that uh, we would definitely need to think about. Um, I see that you've put a lot of thought into this. Um, and we'll have to, to figure out, I think that, that, that we have to look at this, think again about this, because I think this is, you know, a very thoughtful proposal. Um, and then we can see how we can uh, um, go on. Uh, I don't know exactly if you need support from the Sumo team or if this would be something that you would be willing to establish apart from the Sumo team as a complete community on um, um, program. I think that this is something that we should definitely look at. Um, and again, I mean, like, as you see, we, we understand you have, you make very good points, uh, but on the other side, we have, um, you know, all the issues about, you know, like resources and scalability. Um, so I think that this is definitely something we're going to uh, have to think about. And maybe we can um, have a, a, another discussion where we go point by point and, and we try to reach uh, a decision or a conclusion here, Tad. Um, maybe we can have an extra meeting with you and the other guys interested. Uh, or we do it next Monday uh, on the community meeting. But thanks a lot because this is actually going to give us, um, you know, a good starting point um, to think about this, you know, in a different way. Um, uh, Tom, I, I just wanted to ask you. I, I think that one of the very, I mean, if, in my perspective, one of the things that it's going to make this work is the level of commitment of contributors willing to do this. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you, like. Do you have a group of people or, or, you know, like maybe you can start thinking about this so that when we discuss these things, um, we have all the points on the table and we can reach a conclusion. Um, Tom, I don't know if that makes sense to you. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes sense. What, uh, what I can tell you is that we've got lots of contributors who are willing to take on the sort of role of the council. Um, two people have recently emailed me. Let me bring up that email. Um, okay, so I have one email called Scott Funke, and he basically said that he um, going to he wants to basically have the idea of people being sort of like in charge, and he wants to be one of these people. Me and Andrew, who's another person who wants to contribute to this, have disagreed with that because we don't think that the management idea is quite right. 
and we change it into council. So we think that between us three, we could form sort of a council and there's been plenty of people who would want to participate as operators again because I know a lot of people have missed it and I think you've seen that yourself, haven't you, Rosanna? I'm sorry, Tom, I didn't get that last part. Um, lots of people have missed this chat and I think that you've seen a lot of these people, haven't you, Rosanna? Sorry, I, 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 I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble understanding that, 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 that last part. I'm sorry, Tom. Okay. Um, all I was saying is that a lot of people have missed the live chat that a lot of contributors have. And I think we've lost a lot of people's activity due to that. So I think if we brought back live chat, they'd become active again in the community which should generate 20, 30 more contributors back into the project alongside me, Scott and Andrew. Good. So, so I, I see that, that you know, there's a, you know, a group of contributors who are seriously thinking about this and, and you know, I, I think that this, this presentation that you did, you know, shows that there's a lot of thought going into, in, in, into this. Um, so let's get everyone on the table. Let's try to find, uh, you know, let's try to understand how this could work. Uh, let's try to listen to, you know, what you guys thought of. You can also listen to our side of the story, which is why we couldn't support <coughs> Slack chat anymore, and you know, like all the things around scalability. And then we can see how we can make the best out of it. I mean, um, I, I, I don't, I don't know, you know, uh, right up, uh, up until now, we we. We were always uh, against contribute, you know, you know, devoting more resources to live chat. So maybe there's a way that, you know, this can be a whole community-run uh, initiative. Uh, but you know, like I, I think that we should definitely uh, host uh, a meeting. Tom, I'm, I'm going to just point out about the resources that, as for the actual servers, that's something that I would be happy for the team that I'm now. Um, in the community IT team, we could provide Amazon cloud instances for this project. We could provide the micro instance, which costs absolutely nothing to generate literally zero pounds per year. And actual development, that's, that's something that we've already been working on for the last few months, really, developing this piece of software that has actually function how we need it. Okay, um so let me see. Um, uh, Tom, uh, like you said, you know we, we have to think about uh, software development. There, there's a couple of points. As it, as Michael said, it would be very helpful if you can send us the presentation so that we can take a look at it again. Um, yeah. Exactly. You can. Um, yeah. Maybe there's a format um, that we can that we can read, and. Um, you know, all, uh, Andrew is also interested, so maybe we should get everyone who's interested on the table and um, with your presentation and your proposal, have a meeting and um, discuss this. As, as I told you, like, I would love to tell you that, you know, we, we're, we're, we can support this uh, initiative, but um, this is like no promise at all because actually we're like already, uh, you know, we're on, you know, we're doing everything we can right now. So it's going to be very hard to squeeze something in. Uh, nevertheless, I think that it's you know this is a very thoughtful proposal, and we should definitely take a serious look into this and try to find out uh, if we can make it work, um, or or how we can um, figure this out. Um, so you know what, uh, uh, Tom, I'm gonna set up um, 
um, a call. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll send you maybe a, a doodle so that we can arrange a time that works for most of people. And then maybe we can have an IRC, uh, an IRC, because sometimes it's hard with video, so maybe we can have an IRC conversation so that we have the logs afterwards so we can post them. Um, yeah. I don't know if that, that would work for you. Do you think that would be a good idea? Yeah. Oh? Yeah. yeah, that uh, works. That works. Perfect. So maybe we can have a, a, an IRC uh, discussion on this um, so that we have the logs and everyone is able to look at them um, afterwards. Um, I'll try to find out a good time, and I'm looking forward to discussing this. Thanks again, as I told you, for, for this great presentation. So, yeah, Tom, this is okay. awesome. So, uh, after we, we look through this, uh, are you available maybe later this week? I, th I think I probably have some questions I'd love to pick your brain on. Yes, yes, I'm cool. available for most of the week. Probably not Wednesday, though. Okay, Wednesday, which is, is one of my only free afternoons, but <laughs> we'll make it work. Okay. Um, I've just emailed the presentation to Verdi, so that hopefully he can send that to everybody again. Okay. Perfect. Well, thanks, Tamala. And uh, yeah, I, I'm sure that Matt's going to bring, so maybe you guys can start, you know, figuring out uh, how this could work. Um, and I'm going to make sure that we set up uh, a meeting, right, with the rest of the, of the, of the live chat uh, enthusiasts, and that we figure out um, you know, if there's a way to make this work, or how much the Sumo team can actually contribute to this um, solution. Um, exactly. So as I said, no promises, but uh, you know, this was you know, a great presentation, and, and, and I think that this is a very good starting point for a conversation. Thanks, thanks a lot for um, all the time and all the thought that you put into this. It's, um, it's really nice to see. OK, thank you. Um, I'd just like to mention that um, Andrew, who's IRC in his B-56, has done a lot of work into this, um, and he's put a lot into that presentation that you just saw. He created all that Q&A thing, or just put it into a presentation and created some of the wording and decided on the structure with him. So uh, he yeah. couldn't make it today, so I'm bringing it forward to you. Yeah, Andrew's awesome. Thanks again, Andrew. Yeah, Thank yeah you very much. amazing. Thanks, Both guys. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Tom. Um, and yeah, thanks, Andrew, and all the guys who are thinking already about this. Um, as I told you, we're, we'll have a, a little IRC meeting, and I'm sure that Matt and other people are going to ask you some, some, some stuff so that we can figure this out. Thanks, thanks a lot for putting so much thought into this. Um, so if we don't have any further questions, um, I suggest that we move to the Firefox desktop. Anyone, any questions? Otherwise, we'll go to the desktop. I think that was the cue for desktop. Matt, do you want to take this? All right. So things are pretty stable right now for 20, which is always good. So uh, this week, we're working on the user sentiment report for Firefox 20. Should have lots of uh, cool new stuff in it, so be on the lookout for that. And we're preparing for Firefox 21, and we are hoping it is going to be another smooth release. Any questions? All right. All up for smooth releases. That sounds great. <laughs> So, um, 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 Roland is unfortunately not here today. Um, I don't see anything on Firefox for Android, so I think that um, everything's fine there. Um, and um, yeah, I would just hi Rosanna. Um, hi Michelle, you can take that. Hi. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If anyone has um, questions for Roland and you don't hear from him, uh, he's going to be out this week, so you can feel free to send your questions. Uh, to me, if you have any, I know he's been sending out sort of a weekly announcement to the mobile helpers. Thanks to everyone helping with mobile for the um, some bite-sized contributions to uh, the KB. And um, so, if you have any questions about those or getting started, just ping me and Luna. If you don't, um, since you won't hear from Roland this week. Michelle, um, so everyone, if you need Roland, just you know, ping any one of us uh, or Michelle, and uh, we'll help you with uh, your things. 
Um, so Michelle, you're still there. Um, is there anything new on Firefox OS uh, world? Uh, nothing new uh, on Firefox OS uh, that's, that's big to announce. Just thanks to all the localizers for working on the help articles. I think we're in really good shape there. We set five more articles ready for Altenin on Friday. And so I hope we're getting started on those. I am still chasing up the um, builds with Polish. And so, um, and, and also chasing up devices for those contributors who requested them. And um, I don't have any new news on that today, but um, I'm continuing to work on that. So, so thanks to all the contributors helping with Firefox OS help articles. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, I, I've been checking the, um, I'm, I'm going to post a link. Um, that's the, 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 the post on the uh, localization forum where we'll be posting every week the uh, five articles of the week for Firefox OS. Um, as you know, we have some locales that are uh, going to launch a bit earlier. I'm emailing this locale uh, um, about these changes. Uh, I just wanted to say that everyone who has been involved in this, thanks a lot. It's going very well and, and the teams are um, updating the articles. So if you, you just watch that thread, you're going to get every week all, all the updates from Michelle and you'll be knowing uh, how, we're, um, how we're doing with uh, Firefox OS. So thanks a lot for yeah, that. Yeah, it's great stuff. And I should mention that um, the, uh, one of our hardware OEMs is reusing a bunch of the English content for their little uh, user guide that will go with the Alcatel OneTouch Fire phone. So that's awesome. Um, it's, I think, uh, um, just sort of a, a um, really positive uh, way to look at our contributions that our partners are um, also um, seeing them as extremely valuable. So thanks to everyone who worked on the English. Yeah, well, fantastic. I think that that's, that's great. Uh, thanks for everyone. I know that there's a couple of people that came from the technical writing program and who are also people watching those videos. So thanks, thanks a lot. Um, we're ex in extremely good shape for the countries where the where, where you know where the lounges are coming soon, uh, but we also have a lot of locales who are already translating these articles, and that's really fantastic. So thanks everyone. Um, so oh, perfect, um, Thunderbird. Um, as the same thing, if you have any questions for Roland, just let us know, and uh, we will answer them. The next on our list will be the metrics. Kadir, do you want to take this? Yeah, and actually I don't have any updates at this point. Um, we've already talked about the changed KPI dashboard last week. Uh, there is one, uh, one, one of those charts, the, the first one, the questions chart that is missing that we're getting to this week. Um, so after that, I'd like to, I'd love to get feedback on that. Um, other than that, I actually don't have anything. There, um, oh, okay. Yeah, I just unmuted. Sorry. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, um, as you say, as you see, we're we're still growing with uh, with contributors. I know I, we mention this um, every week, but I think it's important to to thank everyone who's welcoming new contributors um, because it's thanks to you that you know our we have more contributors and we're being able to do more stuff. So thanks everyone. Uh, and on that note, um, I want to uh, switch to uh, the community's updates. We've been um, we've been meeting every week, and you know the body program is taking you know it's it's in a better shape. We're trying to help more people, and we are now trying to open the gates, uh, which means we're going to send the form to more people. And the idea is to include that form on the contribute Audi reply email that gets out to everyone inter interested in support. Um, so that's what we will try to do so that more people interested in support who come to us get the order reply form and we can guide more people to the uh, body uh, form because right now we have only a couple of new contributors uh, signing up for every week so we hope that that's going to help us to have more buddies so um, that's what we're working on currently with buddies and that's going good. Um, any questions otherwise um, L to N localization Yay for everyone working on Firefox OS. I just mentioned it before. Um, it's really going great. And yeah. Ralph, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, Brazilian Portuguese is really uh, amazing. Um, maybe you want to talk about a little bit about the uh, weekly meetings that you've been having and how the community changed. 
Um, yeah, so uh, I've been having weekly meetings with the Portuguese person community, and uh, it's it's been helping a lot with uh, with all the contributors to to stay in touch. And uh, new contributors are every now and then like new contributors just pop into the meetings, um, and uh, and it's really helping to organize the LTN efforts and also the uh, the Portuguese proceeding forums and keeping everything in line and keeping everything everybody in the uh, in the same goal. That's, that's awesome. Um, so, I mean, everyone, if you're interested, because, I mean, like, it's fair to say that, the, you know, we had a very, we always had a very uh, core active group of, of contributors in the Brazilian local, like Ruben and, and um, Marcelo and Mauricio Aldi, and we have, you know, we had a lot of people who were always contributing to Sumo. Um, but, you know, you have to do many things so that the, the energy has, was kind of out, and, and I think that, you know, it's helped that Ralph came in and, you know, Mauricio and Marcelo stepped stepping up and taking more responsibility and it kind of like kickstart, like, you know, like re rebooted the community and, and you see like a very different uh, dynamic right now. Uh, so if you're interested in doing this in your community, uh, let us know, Ralph or, or myself, and uh, we can we can help you with some ideas, some guidance. I know that, for instance, um, Alex Alk, Alko is doing a great job with the Greek community. He's trying to engage with people. Um, so yeah, it's like if, if you're thinking about uh, rebooting your community or if you want some, you know, ideas on how to get everyone a little bit more active, let us know and we'll be happy to, to help you with, uh, you know, with what we've learned with the Brazilian Portuguese uh, community. So just ping us. So uh, any questions on that? Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, we can go to the knowledge base, Michael, and that would be you. Nothing, um, I mean, uh, there's just an update that you can read. We're trying something different with the technical writing program. Um, focus more on writing, less on research. Want to have the, uh, a research group do research. Um, Roseanne and I, we talked last week about for the technical writing program, research could be like a side quest um, kind of deal. Um, I seem to have lost everybody. I don't know if you guys can still hear me. We hear you. Okay, that's good. what happens with me all the time. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's that's basically it. Uh, you can read that and check out the link. Um, and while I'm talking, I just wanted to say that I added stuff to the Etherpad about the live chat conversation, including the presentation um, and stuff that was said in IRC. Awesome, Michael. Thanks, because uh, you know we've been talking a little bit, and it's great that you you are you're documenting this so that we have all the information together for a little meeting. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. So you know, uh, I'm 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 really looking forward to this new uh, uh, iteration of the technical writing program. Um, I think also since uh, we have a lot of uh, very active contributors like John helping us uh, with the research, um, it's going to be great that this time it's more about the actual writing and that, you know, we're going to have this group of people doing uh, the research. So yeah, that sounds great. Anyone, any questions here? Otherwise, we will move to the support forum. Um, I think uh, Madalena uh, um, didn't leave any notes. Um, but as far as I know, I think that things are going very well. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, just let us know there. Um, otherwise, um, we're almost done. Any any funny stories? Anything you want to let us know? Should, we should have a, like a special uh, moment here for like the joke of the day. No, but actually, <laughs> what we could do. I would do tell stories, could... but it's just that I don't trust the connection here, so it feels like it, I would ruin the <laughs> the delivery of it. So I'll say. Yeah, it David, you know, I've I've heard from some from some people that that have been telling me that you know you're very funny, so that you should tell more funny stories. You've heard that Wait, from people? You've heard that. Yeah, they're like, why, why, why isn't David talking so much on the meeting? They say that, that David's a funny guy. Huh. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, well, whoever yeah, said that uh, is obviously wrong, but, but thank you. <laughs> you see, you're big. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. But yeah, I mean, maybe we can have this, like, today we have 10 more minutes. I mean, that's not that I want to take away from, from everyone. But if you have any ideas on how to make, you know, like, how to finalize the, the meeting, you know, in a, in a cool way, we can have, like, a, uh, the contributor of the week so that people can uh, nominate someone. 
so we can have at the end of the meeting <laughs> I have a, giant uh, a contributor pink of the week. Oh, there there's a unicorn. Yeah, there. way to go. Is that, is that a good way to? <laughs> well, totally. actually, I like that. I like that idea of having a show and tell thing at the very end of the meeting. So like every week, someone has a show and tell. This, this time it happened to be Patrick. Next time, we should probably decide who it is so you can prepare for something really awesome. You know, right. not that a unicorn isn't awesome, but you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it, absolutely. And, 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 and for the control. Contributors, um, I, I think that, you know, this is a very good recognize uh, people in the community. And uh, of course, we, you know, we know some people, but, you know, maybe you can just nominate the contributors that have done an outstanding work uh, in the past week um, and just put their names here. And then we can we can acknowledge that um, from now on. I, I think that that would be also a good idea. So I'm going to put this here and the action items, the contributor of the week. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little forum post so that people start uh, nominating, uh, you know, other contributors. And, you know, you can nominate yourself. That's also uh, a very good thing. I, I, I think that, that we, we can do a, a good job, um, you know, talking about the great things that, you know, our contributors are doing. And the show and tell, right? Um, and exactly. Let's put the show and tell. Yeah, thanks, David. I think I, I see that you're filling out those uh, action items. So with that, uh, with that in mind, that we're gonna have like a, a nice celebration moment at the end of every contributor meeting. Yeah, maybe everyone can bring something fun. You know, like we, we can we can decide it from week to week. Oh, I think that's gonna that's gonna be a good uh, surprise. Like when we came up with the hats. Um, oh, that's cool. So anyway, uh, if you don't. Have have any more questions? I'm not going to take any more time uh, away from you. I hope uh, certainly, uh, Tom, thanks a lot. Uh, it was very valuable to have you here. And uh, thanks, Andrew, for putting all those thoughts together. Um, we will see you again in one week, right? Um, so have a great week. And yeah, we'll see you on IRC and everyone. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank Bye, you. everyone.